This Tuesday, the final day this session that Iowa lawmakers can get that daily money for things like food, travel, and lodging when they're in Des Moines, it sure does not look like they will be finished with their work by then. So that means starting Wednesday, they'd be on their own dime when they have to come to town. Now, two legislators will join us on what it's like when leadership sends them home while the leaders then try to find what has been a difficult to find compromise. Plus, another lawmaker has decided that more than two decades under the Golden Dome is enough. We'll listen to him explain why, in his words, it's time to rotate the crops. And then this Secret Service agent in the corner is not guarding the John Deere tractors or the grain pile in Menlo. He was there for the president. We're going to listen to the praise the president had when he brought to town. From your local election headquarters, this is the Insiders with Dave Price. So when leadership sent members home early for the Easter weekend, you might have envisioned something like this in a neutral room inside the Iowa State House. House Speaker Pat Grassley, Senate Majority Leader Jack Whitber, trying to wrestle their way through this impasse that they've had the last couple of weeks. You got the budget, tax dollars going to private school students, unemployment benefits, those are among the things they need some final agreement on. Well, we asked two of the newer House Republicans about that finish line that's proven elusive to reach. I think the finish line me being on appropriations is is handling the budget and making sure you know we have a balanced budget amendment and so making sure that we're well within that and making sure we get all our budgets done which the house has we passed every single budget and they're currently sitting in the senate um, which they've yet to have any action taken on them and so i think uh getting to work on those budgets and finishing that that finishes the session but like like we had just said you know there there are a couple uh overarching issues that even though we have the trifecta, there's such a spectrum of Republicans um, that, that vary on some of those, those issues. What, talk about what's this dynamic like? So you all seem to be united on some things in the House. The Senate is also perhaps united in a different way on some other, uh, other positions mm -hmm. here. So what's that like? Well, I think, I mean, we look at it as a family. You have families who everyone loves each other, but there's always fighting in, inside. So we are, you know, like, like Bubba said, we are working on budgets. We're working on some of those policy differences. At the end of the day, I think every Republican knows we want to continue to move this state in the right direction. I think we all have the same end goal. It's just some of those we have, you know, a wide variety of, of uh, a spectrum, which, which I think is a good thing. I think we're a big tent party, and I think that's a good thing to have um, a lot of different ideas. But there are a couple of issues in particular that the, the disagreement has been going on for weeks here. So the governor wants that idea where, you know, the scholarship so that uh, kids can essentially move from public to private. You have a lot of members in your caucus who don't like that. And you're not talking about like a 51-49 vote. I mean, this would be a lopsided failure unless something changes here. So how does that get resolved when the Senate is committed to this? I think it comes back to compromise again and not just so firmly planting your flag on just this one exact bill the way I want it exactly. I think you know, it's a lot of things in that building. Um, you know, you start here, you start here, and you start whittling your way to the middle. And I think that's the process going on. Well, is there on. a way to whittle on this one, or is the I, the gap too big? Do you I just have to punt on this? I think there is. We, we've been having those conversations within our caucus on how we get some of those no votes to a yes vote. Um, I, To my understanding, the governor is is more than willing to, to talk about those, um, those changes. I imagine the Senate would be too. But, I mean, at the end of the day, you have to have 51 votes. Yeah. And if we don't have 51 votes, something's got to give. What about unemployment? Will you all end up siding with the Senate on there and making people wait that week before they can get benefits? Is that I, a compromise? I think we're a lot closer on that than would be the ESA. So I, I think that's something we get figured out. You know, you're you're talking to a couple of guys that are a little lower on the totem pole when it comes to some of those final negotiations. But ultimately, I think we get there. Uh, will you talk about this dynamic? You two are like legitimately friends. Uh, but you got the way redistricting, redistricting works, such a funky process, so, so here you are and you get lumped into the same district, right? Clearly there's no bad blood, I would assume, or you two are really good actors right now. <laughs> so how did you resolve this problem? Well, I, and there, was th there were three of you, really. Yeah, yeah. There, was, there was three of us, and the way our district actually uh, turned out, there were 
um, our area has grown so much over the last 10 years. So there were some open opportunities in, in other districts very, uh, very close. You know, it worked out for me that I was able to uh, move a district over. Um, Representative Gustafson was able to do the same. He was looking at moving to Norwalk anyways. Uh, so really, it worked out fine. I went to yeah. Bubba and I said, well, Bubba, you got a kid, a uh, new, new baby, family, and a house. I, <laughs> I just got done with college. His daughter's college. pretty cute, though. He, he, she is pretty cute. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah. I was a little more flexible to, uh, to make something work. Uh, I was appreciative of that. I mean, I, I walked in after he had told me that. I walked into Stan Gustafson. He had this big smile on his face, and he, I go, "Well, are we primary in each other?" And he goes, "Nope, we're already moving out." And he's like, "I just wanted to see what you'd say to me." <laughs> uh, so, what are you all doing right now? So, you all took a break uh, toward the end of the past week, where all the members get to go home. Uh, have, has the session reached the point where it is truly just? Pat Grassley, Jack Whitfer, and maybe somebody from the governor's office, and they're going to hammer this all together, and then you all hear what the compromise could be? Or are you all involved in the compromise? Well, the, I mean, we're, our leadership has always been very open with us on, on what's going on. Those negotiations are obviously ongoing. Um, once those negotiations have, have reached a point where they can't go any further, um, I think that's when we're, we're going to be brought in, and we're going to talk about it as a full caucus. And, and see where we can go well, on. What is that like as votes. a member here? So basically the bosses are in a room kind of working this out. You all get to do your thing back home. Do you want to, I mean, you've been part of the process leading up to the point. Are you all all right with the way this works? Our leadership, I think, knows very, very clearly where the caucus stands. And, and that's, they're, they're negotiating on, on behalf of, of us as a 60-member caucus. We always say elections have consequences. Well, elections within a caucus have consequences too, and we're we're happy we're happy with our leadership. I mean, they're they're very blunt and honest with us, and we get that allows us to be very blunt and honest with them in return. And so they represent us very well. Are you feeling like bottle bills actually going to happen? I think year? so. I I mean, that's a big change in the last couple of weeks, right? It's yeah. it's a huge change. That's another one of those flags planted in all different areas, and 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 this is where you really have to give a big nod to the lobby because they really worked their different areas. You know, the grocers, the uh, the redemption centers, the you know, and 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 as we sat in our forums and listened to the populace, you know, like hey you know, where do you guys want to be with it? And, and you want to talk about a spectrum of ideas. I have everybody from, we want to raise it to a quarter to please get rid of it and repeal it. So it was just getting everybody to come together on a compromise and see what works for Iowa. And I think I, this is as close as we've ever been. I hate to jinx it, you know, if there's wood to knock on, I think we've got something. Uh, as you both sit here right now, what's the one thing, a couple things still on the table, obviously budget has to get figured out. You, you have no choice on that one. But one thing that has to has to get done for you personally before you all go home for good. Well, the nice thing is, is we've accomplished so much in this session already. You know, there's this end fighting right now on, on those few issues. But, you know, the things that we've accomplished over last year and this year, I mean, look at the historic tax cuts that, that we got done. That was my, my number one thing. So my number one thing has, has been taken care of. Would I like to see um, something done with school choice? I would. But, again, that's going to be something that's going to have to get 51 votes in the House. I think, you know, biofuels, that's another big one, making sure we get something done on unemployment. But I think, you know, uh, getting rid of taxing people's retirement income was a huge win that we already got across the table. And I, I love that we're able to take that back to our constituents. What's biofuels going to look like? I mean, I think it gets done. I don't think it changes much. Again, I think a lot of stuff is being kind of held over in the Senate as bargaining chips. You know, you, you want to talk about political infighting. Um, you know, that's kind of the way politics can work, you know. So like, somehow it'll be expanded so that there are more, there's more E15, but will it be yeah. more voluntary instead of mandatory? Or? Yeah, it's going to be a lot more uh, stations that don't have that infrastructure and, and can't and won't and are not looking to expand in the future. They're going to have a waiver process that's an easy so waiver what's process. what's really the What's the value of this then? So the value of it is there are stations out there that uh, have the capacity to have E15 and don't or choose not to. Get some and, help then? And, and that that hopefully um, will uh, right now ease the prices in gas. I mean, I'm not saying anything brand new. Gas prices are high. So, you know, I think a lot of people are going to start opting for that cheaper option. And now we're we're kind of pushing that into more gas stations or that's what the bill would hope to do. So those two, they're at least in on what's happening up there. Not always the case for Democrats because of their small numbers in the legislature. Up next, a longtime Democratic legislator who says he's leaving. Find out why.